There's a new study out that was released the other day on April 5th, and it showed that mRNA COVID vaccines like Pfizer and Moderna had zero effect on overall mortality. So in this video, I'll explain everything you need to know about this new data. Together, we'll go over graphs and charts. Also, I've created a slide to simplify all this for you. Before we begin, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell in the bottom right hand corner so you can be notified when my new videos come out. Also, click my social links in the description below if you want more content like this. I post extra exclusive content on Substack and Patreon if you're interested. Anyways, let's get into this. You need to check out my new Substack post on the study we're about to go over. I'll post a link to it in the description below. The Substack publication is really nuanced and it covers every aspect of this new Lancet paper. Now quickly, I'm going to give you a two minute overview of the study using my Substack post. Then I'm going to show you an important slide which will act as a visual to help you understand this data even better. Um, one second, let me pull up my Substack post on this real quick. Now look at the title. It says mRNA COVID vaccines had zero effect on overall mortality. Now to set the table, if you look down further right here, numbers one and two, the two most important findings in the study were, again, that mRNA vaccines did not decrease overall mortality for those that received them. As a matter of fact, for the group that received the vaccine, there was next to no distinguishable positive effect in this case, but there were negative associations, which we'll go over later. And number two, mRNA vaccines in this study were were associated with an almost 50% increase in cardiovascular deaths compared to the placebo group that didn't receive them and a nearly 100% increase in cardiovascular death compared to those who received the adenovirus vector vaccines in the other arm of the study. Now to be specific, the adenovirus vector vaccine group experienced nearly zero cardiovascular associated deaths. So remember that for later and now let's move forward. Let me scroll down. Hold on one second. Okay, look where it's it says definitions. Just so we're clear, overall mortality is an umbrella term and it means many types of death. In this study, it's defined as cardiovascular deaths, COVID-19 deaths, accidental deaths, and other non-COVID related deaths. And in the mRNA vaccine group, just so there's no confusion, more than half of the deaths under the overall mortality umbrella were actually COVID-19 deaths and cardiovascular deaths. Anyway, let me scroll down. Hold on one sec. Look here, mRNA, Pfizer, and Moderna arm summarized. So I'm going to highlight the first three bullet points one second. Now, starting at bullet point number one, the mRNA arm of this study contained data from two large randomized control trials and one randomized control trial that wasn't included called CureVac. Bullet point two, all in all, there were 74,193 participants in these trials and half of which received the mRNA vaccine versus the other half or so that didn't. Now, if you look at bullet point three, in total, there were 61 deaths and here's the important part. The same amount of deaths were experienced in the group that received the vaccine versus didn't receive the vaccine. So that means 31 deaths were associated with the mRNA vaccine recipients while 30 were associated with the placebo arm. And that means there was no significant reduction in overall mortality from taking an mRNA COVID vaccine. Now let me show you an image real quick. Let me scroll down to figure two to give you a visual. One second. Now as you can see inside the red rectangle, the first dot sits directly on the vertical line that cuts this whole graph in half and actually a little to the right of the line. Let me explain how this works. So if the line is sitting on number one, it means there's no benefit. If the dot was to the left of line one, there'd be a benefit or a reduction in mortality, but it's actually slightly to the right at about 1.03 is what the figures show, which actually means according to this data, there's a 3% increased risk of overall mortality compared to the placebo group that didn't take the mRNA vaccine. Now let's scroll back to the last bullet point. Hold on. So there were 16 cardiovascular deaths associated with the group who received the mRNA vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna compared to zero who received an adenovector virus vaccine like J&J, which is Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, and GAM COVID vac. So 27 out of 54 of the non-COVID deaths were actually cardiovascular deaths. So even that non-COVID death category has many cardio-related deaths. Now let me 
scroll down so I can show you something else as a comparison. This is a peer-reviewed study out of Nature Medicine. Hold on one sec. Um, okay, as you can see in this study, there were 86,754 cardiac arrhythmia-related deaths in hospitalizations, but mainly hospitalizations post-vaccination that were associated with mainly recipients of mRNA vaccines. Can you see the similarity here? There are many studies associating cardiovascular complications with mRNA vaccination. It's not simply this study we're going over today. Anyways, let me scroll back to the adenovirus vector vaccine portion of this paper. So now we'll talk about those who received J&J, &J, AstraZeneca, and Gamcovac. One second. So let me highlight these three bullet points. So the first three bullet points are the most important. This arm of the study looked at six randomized control trials, which included 122,164 participants. Now there were 46 total deaths and only 16 associated with those who received the vaccine and 30 in the placebo group. So technically there was a 63% reduced risk of overall mortality associated with getting this vaccine compared to not getting it. Now let me bring you to figure number four. Hold on. There were zero cardiovascular deaths. You remember in the mRNA group, there were 16 cardiovascular deaths and other cardio cases bunched into the non-COVID death group. So think of that as a comparison. Finally, I want to show you a slide I created to simplify this video. You can find a copy of this on my Substack post and I'll link it in the description. Again, it goes over the main points and statistics. So feel free to download it and share it. Here it is right here. Just take a quick look at this. It goes over everything we just talked about. So what does this all mean? It means we need more data. It means we need to continue observing. It means we need to proceed with caution. It means there's a not so good trend associated with mRNA vaccines right now. That being cardiovascular complications, arrhythmias, myocarditis. Now what you need to know is that there were some problems with the study as there are with every single study. There's no such thing as a perfect study. First, the cohorts in the study were of different socioeconomic status and more from a higher socioeconomic status was actually actually is associated with better health outcomes, so that's a confounder right there. Next, follow-up for these people was only two to three months, so observation post-vaccination wasn't very long. Although most literature for vaccines says that most adverse events are seen within two months, if you believe in that. Finally, many of the participants in the study were in good health, so outcomes would likely be better for them as they were healthier and from a higher socioeconomic status. Anyways, those are the facts. We still need more data on this, but if there's anything you'd like to learn about in the future, please leave it in the comment section below, and I'll see you on the next one.